Nation bros and bros. What's going on, man? Look, this is with Junior. I trust all as well. Man, we are in for a treat this morning. Oh, man. I'm not even going to let y'all know where I'm at. All, all y'all know I'm in the backwoods with some great friends, about to see some awesome bikes. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, I'm Slicer. Uh, I live here right beside my brother, Old Coop. Uh, we've known each other for 30 years. Uh, we both married our spouses in 1972. We're the same age. And we started building choppers at a very early teens, you know, and I uh, want to welcome you to the backwoods here and the Brothers Coops Hot Rod Shop. Awesome. Morning, my name's Mickey. They call me the Coop. I've been friends with Brother Slicer for 30 years. We've been riding partners. I've been building a bike since I was 20 years old. I started out with a 750 Honda chopper and well, you see what I have today, and I still enjoy it to this time. Wow. So how long have you been riding? 43 years. Woo! Man, that's awesome. I'm 43 years old. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Slicer, how long have you been riding? Uh, since 1969. And, that's uh, awesome. I've been with my, with my wife since uh, 1969 and built her choppers back then when it was actually not a good idea for a female to ride solo by herself, much less ride a chopper. And so she's rode for many years. Uh, I've rode for 55 and uh, I, I continue to ride and it's not as easy as it was being all beat up from the military, but, but my brothers helped me on. We went out west one time and, and, uh, and uh, they'd help me on and off my bike after the VA had told me you'll never walk again. Three days later, I could come over and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm riding for two weeks. And uh, the VA told me I'd never ride again. He said, you're not going without me. And then another <laughs> brother said, you're not going without me. So they helped me on and off my scoot until we got to Mississippi. And, wow. and I'm like, this, this isn't me. If I have to, I'm going to crawl up on it. And, and basically that's about what I do today is crawl up on it and ride. <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's awesome. I mean, did anyone like inspire you to ride or you just always had that passion or? I, I fell in love with bikes at a young age. Quite honestly, I couldn't afford them. Okay. First bike was a 350 Yamaha. I brought from my wife and brother for $25 and I tore it with dirt roads around here. Uh -huh. And then in 76, I bought a 750 Honda brand new. And we used to go buy groceries every Thursday here at home. And uh -huh. I'd wait every month for the chopper magazines to come out. And that's what inspired me. I built my first bike in 1977. Wow. And I've built countless uh, over the years. Worked for Harley. Uh, I don't, it don't matter if I'm stretching a frame or building a motor, it makes no difference to me. I enjoy what I do. And I've been blessed, very blessed by it. Uh, I've wow. been fortunate enough to my panhead. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever seen the movie Wild America, but me and that panhead is in that movie. They, they hired us out to be in that movie. Awesome. And, uh, I've had, I bought that panhead, you can laugh. We lived, my wife and I lived in the trailer. We just got our house and the funds were low. So I swapped the air conditioner out of my house, okay. the trailer, and $750 for that yellow panhead. It was school bus yellow with John Deere green flames. Wow. And I was just as proud of it then as I would today, you know? Oh, man, that's awesome, man. <laughs> wow. We'll encourage you to start riding, man. Pardon me? We'll encourage you to start riding. Oh, I had a friend. He's gone now, but uh, I think I was 12 years old. And uh, his family had kicked him out of the house. And I was still at home, of course, for another couple of years. So he moved in with us, and he had a, a 1964 305 Honda Dream. Oh, no. And it only, uh, it only had one gear, and that was fourth gear. He had blown the transmission. So we had bought him a Volkswagen. And one of the girls down the street, he would date, so he would take her out in his Volkswagen, and as soon as he'd leave, a friend of mine would come over, and we'd push that old Honda 305 Dream, and I'd get on it and ride. Didn't know anything about it, <laughs> but uh, it, it, at that point, it, it set into me uh, as I was, I, I don't know, I might have been 12, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, at that point, I, start, I said, this is, this is what I got to do, you know? And my first bike that was actually mine was a 1955 TT 500 Triumph that come originally on a, a rigid frame. Wow. You know, 
And so it progressed on through the Hondas, the 750 Honda chopper years. That was the thing back in the day, you know, uh, for us that couldn't afford a Harley Davidson. And, uh, you know, I ended up getting a Harley and uh, my life changed. And uh, my daughter, she uh, she actually rode on a, uh, a fender of a hardtail chopper while I was at Fort Carson, Colorado, a young private eating popcorn to keep my motorcycle going, you know. Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> so she, she rode uh, in the belly of my wife up to a week before she was born on a rigid chopper with a hardtail fender, you know, and then of course I got a baby, so I had to, I have to get rid of it, you know, and, uh, but, uh, it wasn't long before I was back in it and, and she's got her own, uh, heritage Springer, you know, so, uh, it's, it's just, once it gets into you, you know, they say it's a way of life, which, mm-hmm. which it is, but more than that, it's, it's, it's what keeps your blood flowing in your veins and keeps your heart pumping. You know, that's the way, that's the way it's always been for me. Awesome. Wow. Let me have a question. I see a lot of trophies over there. What was your first trophy and how did that feel, man? The first trophy was in 1977 in Jackson, South Carolina, the drag strip. They had a custom bike show. And that's when I had built my first 750 home. It was a beautiful bike. It was called the Midnight Rider. Wow. And uh, it just progressed from there. I won trophies with all my bikes and my wife's hot rod in there. She's won several trophies. And I tell you, a trophy to me is an individual like yourself telling me that I have a pretty bike. Yes, sir. That is better than a trophy any day of the week. And that's my opinion. I'm sticking to that because I do believe in that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been very fortunate to be able to uh, to do the things I want to do over the years. And I wanted to go to school to be a, a commercial artist. And things didn't work out. So. I could take a piece of metal. I used to draw, I drew a lot. I can still draw today. And uh, I'll take that and turn it into metal. And it's just as much fun to me. And I'll beat a piece of metal to death and a couple hours later, it'll look like a gas tank. But it's what I enjoy, you know, and, and I've had a blast doing it. I don't care, I'll, I'll cut a frame up in a heartbeat, it doesn't matter to me. I just always got a plan how it's going back together, you know? <laughs> yeah. But uh, I've been truly blessed and uh, I've enjoyed the motorcycle industry. I've been in it pretty much all my life. Worked for Harley, got a PhD from Harley. Um, there's not an engine out there that Harley has made. Uh, I built V-Rods, M8s, twin cams, shovel heads, pan heads, knuckle heads, flat heads. I've been in every engine Harley ever made. Wow. And uh, a lot of it was self-taught over time, you know, but, you know, if you use your parameters and pay attention to what you're doing, you can always make sure it goes back together right. I've made a lot of horsepower over the years. I built one bike, it's called a spotter bike, uh, for Savannah Harley, back when Chris was there. And we was doing 1,486 horsepower on alcohol. Uh, It was stupid. Wow. I mean, it was, you had to pull off a third gear. <laughs> and uh, I, I just, I enjoy making horsepower. I, I enjoy more giving other people horsepower that they, you know, something that's durable and they could ride um, and enjoy it. And they, when they get ready to pass the car, they don't have to downshift. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what I truly enjoy, putting a smile on other people's faces because mine's been there for a long time. Wow. Well, Mickey, I'm ready to smile. <laughs> I'm ready to smile. So, quick question: What is what is you guys' favorite motor out of all of Harley Motors? What's your favorite and why? Mine. I got two. But okay. My favorite's my Pan. Okay. Pan heads are one of the prettiest motors Harley ever made. They're not the simplest to work on. Yeah. They're noisy, but they just they bring back memories. You know, my pan head in there, when it was chopped, I had it, that thing been chopped nine different times over the years. And I'd get on it, I'd have a new bike sitting here and I'd get on it and ride it to Daytona. Wow. 1962, and, and I enjoyed it. Now, the shovel head, I love the shovel head too. Now, it's right there in second place. <laughs> uh, I like them all, I like Evo, I like all of them, but personal opinion, pan would be number one to me and shovel would be number two awesome. for me. Uh, I, of course, I've had that pan there in there since I bought it in 76. Wow. And uh, I've had it ever since. 
that it's supposed to go to a wheel through time whenever I get tired of playing with it. I've been uh, I've talked to Gary, Mr. Gary, before he passed away. Awesome. And uh, years ago, we it was in the Harley shop. It used to sit on the turntable at the old Harley shop right there, Hooters. It sat on the turntable there for a long time. And then uh, some guys from Wheel Through Time saw it and they want it. So I'm not ready to part with it, just like part of the family, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give up on that one easily. I might get buried with it, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, being coots on the same terms, uh, the pan head and and the shovel head. I okay. mean, uh, that's basically what we've grown up with, you know, mm -hmm. and uh that's what we know, every inch of it to build or whatever. And, uh, you, you know, uh, the old school never leaves us. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's right here. And, uh, Mickey, of course, Coot to me is, is the best bike builder I know mm -hmm. and the best wrench. And I'm not throwing that out there because he's my best friend. Mm -hmm. It's because I've seen some of the amazing work he does, you know, and you'll get to see this once we get started. And uh, maybe it'll take you back and, and some of your viewers. The purpose is to take you back in time. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is where I come if I'm feeling bad about, you know, uh, or, or just having a bad day. I come back over and sit with my brother that we can reflect in the past. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Wood Nation is ready, man. We want to follow you, Mickey. You can give us a complete tour because this is beautiful, man. I want to see your work, man. Well, this guy's awesome. I don't have a fancy building, I'd have a bunch of motorcycles. It's been a few years ago, my wife she was on a Sunday, she said, you, you don't have nothing to do? And I don't, I'm not a person to sit in the house. So I came in, I had a frame view. So I took basically a stock frame and cut it up. Mm -hmm. uh, I sectioned it, I went six up on the neck and six up on the down tube and stretched it. It's got a 14 over Springer. And then I wasn't happy with a small tire on the back. So I cut the rear end and sectioned it. Wow. You'll watch the rear end of the fender. It floats with the box. What? Yes. This wow. Is, this is my true 100% my bike here. Uh, I, I was just playing and, and I had engine, I had parts and built the handlebars. Uh, wow. What size are those? That one was that old. beautiful. That was my old drag bike. Oh, cool. Back in the day, it had a 74 iron head motor with a uh, Evo top end on. That motor there is 113 inch with 631 custom cut cam. Wow. Um, she will pull the wheelie in second gear all day. Woo! She's a, she tools on pretty good. Man, that is beautiful. How long did it take you to uh, get it the way it is now? Actually, I was building a bike for Savannah, um, for Chris, mm -hmm. a high dollar bike. And I, after I'd done all my sheet metal work and all the paint work, I sent it to paint. And it was in paint about three months. But inside of three months, I built this play in here at the house. Wow. <laughs> and I ride it everywhere. It's a rider. It's not, I mean, a lot of people wow. bring their bikes to shows and they, uh, they just show them me, I ride them. Oh, wow. That is beautiful, man. She's a fun piece, huh? Okay. I enjoy it. This bike here is a 113, of course it's S&S. It's got a 14, it's dirty, but it's got a 14 over Springer on it. It's got a 113 S&S. Uh, it's got a supercharger made by Magnet Charger. Um, of course, all the work is done myself. She's, uh, she'll hurt your feelings. She'll hurt an engine's feelings on the highway. <laughs> yeah, man, she's a, awesome. I've been caught at 184 mile an hour on that bike. Whoa, really? Yeah. Wow, no wobble, just the street? No wobble or anything? No. Wow, man, this is awesome. Wow. I know a good friend of mine lived around here. Corner, he was in my church ball, and they caught me over there at Cooperville. I was on a mission. I talked that hill coming to Cooperville to run 184. And he told me, he said, Wow, if you turn that thing around, you get it. He's a good friend of my color guy, he's a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, 
If you drive over 55 mile an hour, I'm gonna lock you up. By the time he got here, I already walked to the house and got us a Coca Cola. <laughs> but that, it's a fun piece to ride. I'm getting That's old beautiful. now, so. But I, I, I fell in love with Charter at a young age, and I've had one my whole life. Over 40 years, I've always had one. Wow. And I still enjoy them today. I don't, I don't ride them as much as I used to. I'll get, I'll get them out every now and then, stretch them out. Blow the throats out the carburetors. But, uh, she's a fun. I mean, how many super jars do you see on the highways around? Exactly. You know, it's a, it's, it's, it's bad. I mean, it's, uh, it's notorious. 100% aluminum body. Wow. Custom built frame, I built the frame. Um, wow. I built the body, the jank, all that stuff. Everything's hidden inside the body. Everything. It took me quite some time, but I started that when I was at the Harley shop, with Chris. And then after I left, just sat on the battery and ran it for many a year. Uh -huh. And then uh, my best friend was general manager down there, so he said, "Here, I got a present for you." He said, "I've had it probably 15 years," and finally, a couple of years ago, I got interested in it. Half the parts were gone, and I had to build a. That's a handmade gas tank. I oh, handmade wow. it. Of course, all the body part. Everything is. The only thing metal is the front rear fenders in the tank. The rest of it is aluminum, shaped aluminum. There's, oh, there's wow. Metal to to wow, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. <laughs> this is this bike here has got the biggest engine of all ever. Oh really? It's 147 cubic inch. Okay. Uh, that's the one I told you about that had 1500 horsepower. That was it back in the day. Wow. And then my best friend got it, and uh, I took a supercharger and all that stuff off, and then we run it just on motor. Right now, sitting there, it's got like 256 rear wheel horsepower on street gas. Wow, how much horsepower? Excuse me. How much horse? How much horsepower? Two fifty six. Ooh, wee. That's just that's on pump gas. Now you get cam two in it. You get on right up close to 300. Yeah. I built that bike when I was in Savannah at Harley, and then I had I told Chris do not run alcohol on this thing on the street. On the strip, yes. Yeah. The street, no. He wanted. <laughs> Chris is a flamboyant little guy. He's a good guy to me. He yeah. gave me an opportunity to build a lot of stuff over the years. Awesome. And um, we done the alcohol. And then he goes down to Florida the next day. He wanted to, it was all stainless steel custom fit fittings. There's a lot of money in this bike at one time. Wow. And one of the hose had a pinhole in it. It burnt downtown right up from Blue Hill Saloon. It burnt to the ground. And then Chuck got it. Then I brought it back. Wow, that paint looked like it's candy or something. That's pretty clean. Mm -hmm. It's like a red. Is that a red? And then they yeah. kind of wow. There was That's uh, cool. Chris had an aviation company called Spider Aviation. Mm -hmm. And when I built this bike, as you can see the plane in it, my best friend was a, he was a lead technician down there, and wow. uh, we had Chris Cruz in Florida to paint it, and it was Spider Aviation, so we had to. Plane put on the tank with a spider. Chris Cruz actually painted. He's a he's a well known painter. Okay. But uh, wow, it needs to be cleaned up and ridden as well. <laughs> no, that's my old two fat boy. That is beautiful too, man. <laughs> she, she's been, I've had her since I bought her new in O2. Wow. I've had her ever since. She's been a good motorcycle to me. I've enjoyed it. Awesome. I took about three trucks and built this truck. Uh, I actually. Built the truck. If, if you had it up in the air, the frame, all holes is filled. The fenders, I mean, uh, the frame, all that's painted the same color as the truck. It's got a 383 stroker with 871 and uh, 2750 Hollies matching paired. But the, pipe, the truck was put together piece by piece. I done the frame, 
had the motor in it, the rear end in it, the suspension. I painted the cab and put it on there, and I, then I done the front end. But uh, when I had it done, it was like 756. It was a rear wheel. Wow. And uh, she was a, she's a grocery getter now. All the body work, all the work, everything was done by me and my wife. She helped me. Oh, that's awesome, man. Wow. And, uh, that's, this is her truck. I built this wow. especially for her. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful. And you did all this yourself? Yes, there's a killer guy down the streets, a friend of mine. I've known him all my life. He done the seats. Wow. What's your windows good? What? And you turn on the stereo, the antenna, <gasps> antenna comes out. I looked like it was just like a, what? Yeah, doing it that way. Look at that. <laughs> Brother, you rock. I've never seen that before. I grew up like and roll up antennas with <laughs> <laughs> He got air conditioning in it too. It's yeah, 49. Air conditioning? Heat and air. Wow. Like I say, if you turn the stereo on, uh, the antenna comes out the cab. Is that, what is that, blown? Oh, yeah, that's the blower on the truck, on the motor. Oh. Uh, I was playing with it first of the year. Well, she let it sit up back here for quite a while. She got, she lost interest in it or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, the carburetors just sit there. So I pulled them off, went through them, cleaned them, put kits in them. Mm -hmm. And I forgotten that I had done only three quarter throttle for her. Yeah. So she's driving it. So I said, well, I'll fix this. So I then full throttle on with <laughs> butterflies up. All, all eight butterflies were open up at one time. I pulled out on the street and them 20 by 12s, wow. they hooked up. When they did, I broke both, both shot hands off the back. I was sitting, I turned around and rode me and I was sitting on the body. Gosh, this is show him where your fuel tank is back there. Yeah, there's a fuel tank right there, bro. Is it really this here? Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's wood Nation, check that out. You see, my wife stained all the wood. We ordered a wood kit. Everything's original except for these fenders. Mm -hmm. They uh, they are fiberglass because of the width of the wheels. And I was going to take fenders and cut them and, and patch panel them and put them back together, but I found these. Gotcha. So that's the only thing glass on the truck. Get there. Wow. How long did it take to get it the way it is now? It, built, it took me about two years. Two years? Okay. And it's got a uh, 10 volt posi in the rear end. The front end is a, what they call a Mustang 2. Oh. And uh, Fat Man's in North Carolina actually built that. I ordered it from him. So he drives and handles like a car. Wow. And, uh, it kind of resembled that one back there in the back. You can see it from here, that blue one, mm -hmm. when he first oh, got it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wanted, I was like, man, I want to go check those out with it. Dude, that is cool, man. Yeah, that's, I got some over here. Those other projects? Or? No, those, that's one of the ones. I actually gave it to a friend of mine. He's working on one. He needed some parts. And what about that one there? The old 62 there. Wow. There's a couple of gentlemen I knew here at home. Mm -hmm. Back in, I've had that truck. 35, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Seriously. It's kind of trashy back here, ma'am. This is down the hill, you know what I mean? No, this is good. <laughs> That's right. Wow, bros and broids. Check it out, Wood Nation. True backwoods, man. These guys are awesome, man. Look at this, man. Just allow me to come over, man, and just, you know, share with you guys. I mean, the history, man. This is, wow. This is beautiful. Look at that there. Y'all already know how I am with back ones. <laughs> Look at there. Wow. That is beautiful. Man, that's beautiful. Now, is that a pan head or what? Is... That's a shovel head. Shovel head, okay. That's another 113 inches. Woo. Had the cases built. It's an S&S. Uh, wow, it's she's beautiful. got the supercharger on it. Anyway, the bike was running. And we, Brother Slice and I had a friend, who was a friend here in town, mm -hmm. who was painting. Okay. And uh, he had to leave town, so he was trying to take my bike with me, and I went and got it. 
I know that's right. <laughs> he actually, he actually stole my pickup. Yeah. That, <laughs> wow, that's yeah, nice. That's a hand-built frame there as well, too. That's hand-built? Wow. Yep. Built frame on that one. This is this a what, winter. What year is it? Uh, that bike, I don't know. It's probably... Gosh, that's awesome. Probably 15 years old. Flat side, but it, the motor. The flat side, that's going to be a 65, 66, 67, okay. 68, 69 version. That's s, &S is flat side. This is my English roller. If you, when I get too shaped in metal, I bring oh. it in here. You wow. have different dies that you can change the picture to metal. What? And yeah, this right here is my tubing bender. Don't come back here, it's a mess right here. <laughs> More bikes? Cool, you are the man. <laughs> I just enjoy this stuff, brother. I, I just, I have a. Wow. Uh, built frames, actually, this. Okay. It's got a digital readout, so when I make a bend, I can make, if I'm building handlebars uh -huh. or two down, two. Down to when I mark it, it'll tell me every time where I'm putting my pins at. Wow. So, um, dude, this is awesome. Wow. This is where it all happens, a lot of those wow. well, plasma cutters. They got a smaller lathe over there. They got a bigger lathe here. Cool. You are like, so you're like for real, for real. <laughs> no, I mean, to be awesome, able to brother. build stuff, brother, you got to have this stuff. Exactly. You know. Because so many people cut corners, man. You are not cutting corners. No, I mean, I've been fortunate to be able to find this stuff. Wow. Hey, you see the front end I got, bro? Yeah, what? That's a drum brake? Yeah, left hand drum too. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's nice, bro. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Frame. Oh, that's a frame right there. Yeah, that's a little sports frame. Cool, man. You know, it's just. Wow. All kind of stuff in here, man. 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 You have, I mean, I can take flywheels. I've taken flywheels and put on this machine. Uh, if they pit or anything, mm -hmm. or if I'm trying to lock them up, if it's big enough, I could turn them down. I can actually make screws on this one. Three really? inches. Yeah, on this one. Now, the rest of them I can't. I got wow. a little one in there I play with all the time. And a piece of aluminum around here don't stand a chance. <laughs> <laughs> this bike here I built several years ago. When I was at the Harley shop, that bike here was about $200,000. Oh, that's a it. brand new motorcycle I dissected. Put wow. it back together and make it look like an old one. Now, the spotter bike is that right there. Oh, this? Oh, nice. Okay. And the old orange bike that's in there. That's it there with the big motor in it. That thing had over 500 horsepower. Mm -hmm. I was running 200 shots of nitrous to it, too. Wow. Matter of fact, when I was a kid, I met my wife for the first time, didn't even know her. I was traveling through the woods over there because my uncle was farming this place. Uh huh. And I saw her down at the Uncle Mars had old store. Mama give me a dime and I go in and get me a snicker bar, a rock and roll plank, and a cool pool of wood. Never seen, man. I, cool. <laughs> I can remember riding through Statesburg in the 70s and probably rode a slice of can too. Mm -hmm. If your hair touched your ear as you was on a Harley, you're going to get a ticket, bro. <laughs> this I know. You and remember right that? Now, What's that, bro? Back in the 70s, early 80s, you rode through Statesburg, your hair touched your ears, you're going to get a ticket. <laughs> and rode a Harley. I can remember when I come back. I was being a PC uh, change of duty station to Europe. I had a chop 750 Honda, uh -huh. and uh, I just got it out of the Honda shop in Bray. I was on leave. We was doing a 30-day leave, so I was down in Bradenton, Florida, and, and it was a chop radical 750, and they'd done something to the top of the motor, so I brought it home, and uh, they'd taken the motor out and put it back in, and they left my chain loose, so uh, I noticed I had an oil leak. It actually rubbed a hole in my oil tank, you know? Uh -huh. So I'm cruising back early that morning to a Honda for them to fix it. And I get pulled over by these cops. So I'm uh, standing there with my hands up and they're leaned over their cars with their guns pointed at me. Oh man. Saying, uh, put your hands up. That Harley Davidson's been reported stolen. And I'm like, dude, 
this isn't a Harley Davidson. <laughs> this is a Honda 750, you know. Right, don't move, don't move. And I mean, you know, it was like, it was getting really tense. And finally, like they should have, they run the numbers on it and it comes up a Honda, not a Harley, you know. Wow. So I went in, grabbed me a donut at Mr. Donut there and continued on my way. You know? <laughs> so is it true, because I heard that's uh, like the old school Harleys, um, the oil would shoot down or something like that, or? It's not uh, right. Okay. They had old panhead, well that panhead in there. Uh, I think it's the pan, yeah. They had what they call, and that one has as well, they have a tin primary. Okay. It's not aluminum like the late stuff. But it comes out of the motor on a breather and it drips on the chain. Uh, well, right here there is a punched area in the bottom corner. And what it does is it oil slings out of there and runs on your chain. That's why they, that's why Harley Rider back in the day, now people just like black t-shirts now, but back in the day, if you wore a white t-shirt right in the middle of your back, there's gonna be a chain streak where it oils you. Oh. Yeah, it had a little check ball in it yep. with a spring, and you could actually unscrew it, pull that check ball out, and stretch that spring if you wanted and put it back in. What? Sometimes on the old shovels and stuff, when you, when you kick them, or, or if you got an electric start, it, it'll squirt oil down underneath the motor mm -hmm. through, the, through the tube. Wow. So, uh, especially if they set for a while, it gets a little gummed up. So you just unscrew it there at the cap and take the little ball and spring out, stretch it a little bit and wipe your ball off, put it back on and yep. you're good to go. Yeah, it's stopped wow. for a while. I never knew that. That's why they wore the black shirts, because you're right at all that. Oh. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> Man, I, you I, guys I rock. I can't believe that. Wow. Oh, like them old, uh, the old choppers he's got in there with it. No, no front fender. Uh, I mean, you ride them in the rain, you got a rooster tail up over your head, oh, so yeah. you really don't have to worry about taking a shower or nothing when you get home. <laughs> yeah, really wash. I've been caught several times. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's, you ride like this, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, he's telling the truth, brother. I mean, yeah. my wife, she told me it's been a few years ago, I took that black chopper and went down to Savannah one Saturday. She said, it's not going to rain, honey. So we cut through, climbing out of those back roads to get to there. And right there at 17, where you come into 17, where the road splits like that? Yeah. Pulling that gas station in the rain so hard you could even see. Yeah. Wow. I get on up to uh, Newington up there and the sun came out. Uh -huh. He was right. I mean, you get to ride like this because <laughs> it, it gives you a perfect trail of water right between your eyes. Oh, man. And that black supercharger and that, I mean, uh, orange supercharger and that other one with that velocity stack on the front, you have to throw your leg in front of the carburetor to keep water from getting in it. Oh, gosh. That's, that's a lot of moving way. puzzles, man. Yeah. <laughs> I can remember back. Coming out of the swamps as a young man at 17, raised my hand going to the military. My first duty station was Fort Carson, Colorado. And I was born in Florida and never seen snow. So got my chopper there. I was gonna ride it in the post. It's like 30 miles to Fort Carson from Colorado Springs. Never rode in ice and snow. And me being a young and dumb private, I'm like, I ain't nothing to this, you know? <laughs> so I started out and got into a curve and went down with it and just slid right up into the gas station. Ooh. So this old man comes out there and he looks at me and he says, uh, you must be in the infantry. I'm like, yes, sir. I'm gonna lay it on the ground, you know? He said, y'all the dumbest SOBs I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> 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 and I said, okay, sir, you mind if I park this thing here? I'm gonna hit back to work, you know? <laughs> I tell you what, man. Wow. You meet a lot of good people on, on, on the Harley. Exactly. Harley's a big family. I agree. I'm not saying the farm market's not. But, I mean, you might ride five years and saw somebody that you saw five years prior to that. Yeah. I know uh, year before last, me and Brother Slosser didn't get to go. That's when you had your heart attack. Yeah. yeah. Uh, being a friend of ours, we tore out, we went out west again. Mm -hmm. And we was coming back, they was tornadoes in Texas everywhere. We coming up a square of Texas, cutting across to Louisiana, pull in there probably know where it's at there on that interstate. I can't remember the name of the route. Anyway, pulled in there and uh, filled up. Yeah, I told him, I said, man, I'm hungry. It's about, it's about two o'clock, I'm hungry. So went there, and there was a gentleman there. He had his Air Force hat on. And I said, thank you for your service, sir. And we sat the next table and we was talking to him. And he, uh, he's a boy, I said, I'm 101 years old. Wow. He said, I got shot down nine times in World War II. Got shot out, of, out of, in Germany twice. And Japan, he said. Yeah. Wow. I said, you lived through it. And they was, he had a caretaker with him. And uh, 
he told me, what's your name, boy? And I told him, that's Wayne's name. And I told the young lady, I said, do me a favor, sugar. She brought some tea and I said, bring me his, I want to pay for his lunch, you know. So I got it, we got to leave and, you no, know, they was getting up to leave. And the old man said, I need to pay for my lunch. She said, no, sir. see that gentleman right there? So he paid for it. He said, boy, I, he said, you look like one of them hippies, but I like you. <laughs> he said, you didn't have to buy me lunch. I said, you didn't have to get shot down nine times, did you? Exactly. And then old girl sitting there, you don't have to do that. I said, the way I look at it, sugar, you need to show this man some respect. But without people like him, we wouldn't have what we got today. Yep. You know? Yep. What advice would you guys give riders today? Like, what, what type of advice would you give riders today? Go ahead, Okay, well, you know, sometimes I'm on a, 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 some sites that I look at, and some of the younger riders show so much disrespect to the graybeards, like me and Coot and many others mm -hmm. yeah. that are out there, that actually have lived through the AMF years of Harley Davidson, been there to support them all this time. It's the older guys that has actually made the way for these guys, and they don't realize it. I mean, mm -hmm. Today they have their cell phones and, and their little masks and their helmets would speak a uh, little microphone so they can talk to somebody behind them. Back when we rode up and when my wife and I rode, we rode choppers. We only had a master link in case our chain broke. Set of points. Uh, yeah, set of points, <laughs> set of plugs, condenser, and a sleeping bag. Wow. We would ride whenever we got ready. We would stop at a creek or a river and jump in it and bathe, you know. We never had a destination. Mm -hmm. We just rode. Nice. And today, it, you know, it's it kind of, it, I know it kind of breaks my heart when I see the younger generation speak of the old graybeards because mm -hmm. we've been there and done that, you know. Uh, and, and always stop and help a brother, you know. And, and I, I can give, I can let you know about, I went to Daytona one year on one of my choppers. My ignition took a crap right at the bridge at Jacksonville where you go to, Daytona or, 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 or hit I-10, I bet a thousand Harley riders went by me. Wow. Nobody stopped. A guy on a Honda pulled over as I was pulling my wires out through my gas tank, wiring them up. He said, you need any help, man? I said, no, I got it now. I said, but I'll tell you what, if you'll ride with me to Daytona, I'll take you to the Blue Hill Saloon and we'll drink together. That's exactly what we did. here for so long exactly so do you want to ride and show respect to everybody you yeah. know that's about all i got on that man. so uh, old cats like us are few and far between these days yes, sir. you know we we had the opportunity to grow up and, and ride the good way and possibly the hard way but we enjoyed every minute it would be traded for anything else no uh i feel sorry for the younger generation because they they tried to imitate what we we've already proven and done mm -hmm. i'm not saying they imitate i'm just saying that they you know to get on they hit the stereo and they hit the button and go and it's it's different for us we we could do that now we do that all the time now i mean do i want to ride on the chopper from here to daytona now no not when i got a road glide with a stereo and a cruiser <laughs> hey, man. and clarence car you know what i'm saying yes sir but uh and it's good it's good today but uh, we're we're very fortunate to come up to a time that uh, that you learn the hard way and you learn how to work on your bike. I mean, many a day you'd work, you'd ride them all day and work on them all night. Wow! And the young generation, they don't. Uh, you know, I pull up on a panhead or a shovel head or even the Evo. Hey, man, I, I, that's a knucklehead. They're really not schooled in it. Wow. They don't know. You know, I've had them on the dyno down at the hardware shop. I had a shovel head or a dyno, man. That looks like a not two or three guys. No, that's 1949. You know, it's not. It's 1980. <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's just, if you don't know, just to me, I mean, kind of keep it to yourself. Yeah, they, they talk about, you know, some of the younger guys. Uh, yeah, my, my dad, he had a 1969 panhead. And I'm like, wow, man, I hope you still got it because they quit making them in 65. <laughs> you know things like that but we've yes, learned to accept that over the years oh, yeah it's, you it's know. part of it you know it's it's kind of funny that, that people do i mean they're trying to i'm not i do what i do because i love it mm -hmm. i don't do what i do to impress nobody if they love it 
It makes me feel good if they don't, then each to his own opinion. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to go anywhere trying to impress nobody. Yeah. Now, if you're trying to blow smoke or BS me, well, that's the wrong thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you know? sir. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll stand toe to toe with you then. Yes, sir. But uh, you know, if you don't know, just leave it alone. So I, I think there's an old Harley. You don't. You know, we had a cat coming in, in the old shop. I helped the boys in Statesboro, and uh, man, I bought, I bought a 1979 knucklehead. <laughs> I, I got to see that, bro. I like fell out. I said, I got to see this. Yeah, man, it's it's it's, it's cool, man. It's it's cool. He's an old dude, and I figured him being an old dude, he might would have known. You know, it was a 19, 1979 Sportster. He showed me a picture of it. Yeah, that's, man, that, that's. A, yeah, I think something backfired at some time, and you know, if they're in the they're in the tower, yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> it might have backfired a little bit. Yeah. I tell you, I'm a member of the Antique Motorcycle Association. Me and another good friend of mine, Flosser's Fiction, join. And we go to all these swap meets and things and events they have. And mm -hmm. The young generation is pushing up the price because they don't really know. You know, and, and I feel sorry for them in that aspect because they go in there and they buy a Linkert carburetor, which I got about eight in there. It's an old Harley carburetor. Okay. I saw a guy give $1,250 for it. Because it had linkered on it, it was an M74, which is wow. a higher iteration version of it. And these people pay this money because they don't know. And I, I, I kind of feel sorry for them to a bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, wow. it's funny. That's, I like to go. I like to just go watch the people because they spend some money. Well, I go ahead and tell you. <laughs> wow. So Mickey, I have a question. Yes. Sir. Is anything in their garage for sale? <laughs> if you talk to my wife, probably yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just I keep building this stuff and and I keep it, you know. And uh, I've I've already got paperwork. I have two real close friends, or three. I got Slicer, I got my best other best friend Jay, and then I got Chuck. Mm -hmm. And somebody, if something happens to me, somebody's gonna sell this stuff, and my wife's gonna get all the proceeds. Okay. Which the orange, I mean the yellow bike's already spoken for, and yeah. uh, and the rest of it. You know, something happens to me, Slicer will get one, Jay will get one, Chuck will get one, and the rest of it gets sold. Wow. But, I mean, I, I just, I mean, I might not ride them all the time, but I do like look at them. I know, yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, it's just fun to me. And the old, uh, the old Limey bikes, we call them, the, the British yeah. bikes. Uh-huh. They had, uh, any, anybody that's, that's old school and, and, and owns one, we had a term, uh, before you cranked it, you would have to tickle, tickle it. it yeah. We called it tickle. <laughs> and it had the old Amel carbs on it. And to prime it, it had these little buttons that you would mash mm -hmm. up and down until the gas come out, you know, on each wow. one on the old Amels. They were cool carbs. All they had was a slide in them and a mm -hmm. spring. It's really easy, not like the CV carbs we have today. But we'd have to tickle our old Beezers, or BSAs, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the Triumphs, you know, and, and the Nortons. Wow. Uh, they build a beautiful motorcycle. I mean, that a Triumph, a BSA, and, and the 750 Honda back in the day was the chopper. I mean, we couldn't afford a, a new Harley Davidson. You know, I couldn't at, at 15 and 16 years old. You know, wow. so we built. We would actually, I would go to a uh, a junkyard, and back then they had uh, the old 63 Falcon uh, Fords uh -huh. that had four lug uh, tires on it, four lug rims, and it was a 516 tire. So I would wow. go there and pay them $5 for the tire and they would take it off the rim and I'd put it on my motorcycle. <laughs> because I couldn't afford a new one. Nice. And I built the choppers by even taking a lawnmower parts uh, where your push bars are going down to push it in the middle. Uh, there's an insert that's shaped like a U. I've used them plenty of times for fender fender struts. You know, to set wow. your fender on and bolt it down. So it's all part of not having the money uh, not like today, you can go and, 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 and order your stuff, whatever you want, you know. Yep. Back in the day, it was it was by trial and error. And yeah. that's why Oku is so good at what he does. I mean, I've seen some work he's done. It's incredible. Wow. Uh, and I scratch my head because I've, I've been building too a long time. But when I met Coot, you know, I said, this guy is the real deal. This was my first chopper tank. Ooh. Molly Hatchet, Midnight Rider on the side. 
That was on the that front of the rock. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is your first one? Very yeah, first one. Man, that's beautiful. She's dirty. <laughs> All right, one, two, three. All right. Okay. Okay, Mickey, any closing thoughts you want to say to Wood Nation, man? Brothers and sisters, keep the sunny side up and the rubber on the ground. Ooh, my man. Are you going to say to Wood Nation? Yeah. Welcome to the backwoods of Georgia. Yes, sir. And uh, we hope you guys appreciate this video. It's just two old men that enjoy what we're doing. Thanks wow. for coming out. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. Right, well, you're Thank, you, you rock, man. Thank, Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yes, sir. How about that picture? Oh, that's the. Oh, that's cool, man. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you thought it was over, baby, look at this. Wow. This right here is a uh, 1964 what? 305 Super Hawk Honda that I'm restoring. Really, man? Yeah, this was the big dog back in 64 of the Japanese motorcycles. It would actually outrun a Triumph 650. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, and it's uh, 305 Super Hawk. Well, 1964. This is a uh, uh, what they call a, a Mount Rushmore uh, street glide. Okay. And of course, Bo put the stereo system and all in it, which uh, wow. it rocks. And uh, it's cammed up and all, so it, it you know it. it oh, it's cammed. Uh, yeah, what? yeah. It's I crank it in here, but it would shake all my tools off. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> I've had that happen before. On the 160 CB 160, some of your people. Their fathers may have had one of these back in the day. Oh, wow. Uh, I bought that from a guy, and the motor's locked up. The story is his father went to Vietnam mm -hmm. and got killed in 1969. Oh, wow. And uh, when I brought it home, I asked him, I said, do you want to keep the original tag, you know, because it was 1969. Yes, sir. And, uh, and I, I, I bought it from a black brother over in uh, West Georgia. Okay. And... Uh, so I brought it home to restore it, and I don't have time for that. And, I'll, and over here is the slowest motorcycle Honda's ever made. I got into restoring some of these Hondas because they were bringing big money. Uh huh. And then my health, all, you know, thought real well. But this is a 1975. 1975. Wow. 200 Honda. Ooh. And if you read up on the information on it, that's it's, they, they claim it's the slowest motorcycle. Oh, oh yeah. Made. Now I got it running and everything, and uh, it runs really good, shifts good. I just haven't uh, finished it to, you know, to get ready to sell. Uh, oh, that's I mean, one day when I find somebody that uh, might be interested in in uh, training one of their children mm -hmm. to learn how to ride, I just might give this to them, you know, because it's it's. I'm not going to do anything with it anymore. Wow. But, uh, I would probably do that just to uh, get somebody experience on riding a motorcycle. You know, you grow up on them. You can't dislike them because without these teaching me learning how to ride, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't know how to ride what I have. You know, my so orders. true. So true. So. Man, <laughs> well, Evo got that big 117 CBO road glide, and wow, we had like an hour to get to Savannah Harley Davidson one day from just come across the state line. Uh -huh. and, uh, I said, We got to ride, so he he took off. Wow, and I run up there beside him, and he pegs out at about 112. Ooh. And I looked over at him and did one of these, so he finally pulled into Savannah Harley Davidson. He said, Man, I think something's wrong with my motorcycle. <laughs> That's a 103 motor, but it's built. You That's know. a 103? Yeah, yeah. Gosh. Oh, my 
Lord, that thing sounds good.